Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. If I didn't get a chance to personally welcome you, a lot of new voices on the line yet again this Monday morning. If I didn't, this is your first uh, call here with Pro Elite. Let me be the first one to welcome you to our community. We got a lot of great things in store for you, but we got a lot of great things in store over the next couple of minutes. So I'm going to step aside and get out our fearless leader, Pro's Pro Elite's founder, our C or uh, chief marketing partner. Or I'm going to get it wrong. I'm just so excited, man. Chief Can you hear? Marketing partner, I love it. Get on out here, man. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for getting this call started, for directing traffic uh, flight uh, from the Flight Control Center there. We appreciate you uh, coming out this morning. We appreciate your energy, and uh, we thank you. Thank you for getting this call started, my friend. Truly my pleasure. Awesome. Folks, uh, I couldn't be more excited myself. This is the first uh, of uh, a brand-new call with a brand-new uh, professor here with ProU and a wonderful leader and uh, before I bring him out, we kick off the first mic time with Patrick Holmes. I uh, just want to uh, see if I can embarrass Patrick really quick here before he gets started, just because, well, I think that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> uh, Patrick may not know this, but I uh, one of the I saw Patrick speak, oh gosh, it must have been uh, seven or eight years ago. And uh, when I saw him speak, uh, he did this presentation. It was actually... Uh, a, well, it's not the same presentation he'll be doing at Summer Week, but it was similar. And he uh, he gave this, this 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 presentation, and I remember feeling this impact. I was like, wow. Not only does this inspire me to become a professional and, and hone my craft, because he was just such an amazing professional speaker, um, it inspired me to become a professional speaker as well. And I remember mustering up the courage to, to go up to him and to – to introduce myself, and, you know, I felt like I was just, you know, I was a nobody. I was like a fly on the wall. I didn't really, um, you know, I didn't really have any results, or I didn't have any, rec- you know, credibility, or I, I just was a nobody. You know, I was, I was brand new. I hadn't, made my, I hadn't even made my first dollar yet. And um, I remember thinking up some clever phrase or saying, and I said something to Patrick about, you know, I'd, I really would love to be a, a public speaker one day. Uh, you really inspired me something along those lines. And he looked at me and he said, you mean a professional speaker? And uh, (laughs) I I said, yeah, that's it. That's it. And so that was one of my first impressions of Patrick, uh, a true professional, someone who's committed to a process and committed to the end result that can only come from sticking with the process and by executing the systematic steps to get you from where you are right now to where you want to go. So it is my absolute pleasure, and it is uh, an honor to introduce to you our uh, pro league community, Patrick Holmes, the founder and CEO of Mike Club. And uh, Patrick, come on out here, my friend. Good morning, Jay. How are you? I, <laughs> I'm just going to stop talking because I'm mumbling all over myself here, kind of like Matthew was. We're excited to get this call started. We're excited for this brand-new call series, Monday through Wednesday. Patrick, I'm just going to step to the side. I'm going to step backstage here and let you let you really take the floor. But I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge you in front of the community and, and uh, just recognize you for what you've done for me personally uh, and how you've helped in my personal development, not only as an entrepreneur but as, as a leader and, as I said, a professional as well. So thank you for that. And, my friend, let's get this call started. Thanks so much for the uh, really nice introduction. And you mentioned one of – you know, through your anecdote, you happen to bring up one of my favorite words that applies to the topic, one I was not going to discuss yet on the call, but is perfect, uh, the perfect timing, and that is the word professional. So mm-hmm. over the course of um, my time on these calls, you're going to hear, you be introduced to a lot of different terms, but they're all very, very specific to one word, and that one word is called might. Might is the only word in the English dictionary that means both power and possibility. And one word that we use a lot in something that we call might time, and that's what I'm really anxious to introduce you all to, over time, all in good time, is the word professional. And we often discuss the difference between a professional and an amateur. And it's really simple towards what Jay said. A professional is someone who shows up even when they don't necessarily feel like it. And that one little difference makes a huge difference in people's lives. So I'm going to dive in right now with a story 
and it is a story about a woman. It's a true story. A story about a woman who grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, Stephanie, and she got her bachelor's in English back in 97. She married her childhood friend when they were both 21 years old, and they had three children. So Stephanie was an English major, but she had never, ever written a short story, and she was going to go to law school. You know, that was her aspiration because she had no chance of becoming a writer. Um, but she decided against going to law school when she had her first child because it was then that she knew that she wanted to be a mom that had the privilege of staying home. Stephanie's only other job, you should know, was a job as a receptionist. All right, here's where the story gets really interesting to me. One night when Stephanie is 33 years old, three children, right, this story idea comes to her in a dream. Now, based on this dream... She wakes up, she takes action, and she writes her first short story, emphasis on short. She only writes 10 pages. I say only. Is that a big deal or a small deal? I don't know. It's a short story, but, hey, it was her first first 10-page story. Now, let's stop here for one second. Let's consider what we've just heard. So far, this is many people's story, actually. It's a very common life story. We have somebody who wants to write but doesn't, except for this one, you know, this, for this, first, this first go at it. She loves her life as a mother, and that's what she does, but she had this dream of writing also. Then one day she gets a, an idea. That's all. She just got an idea. How many of us get ideas, but we never act on those because what are we, who are we to be so bold? What validation does Stephanie have that she's a writer? She doesn't have any validation for being a writer. She hasn't written anything. She's never been published. Nobody sees writer in her. Nobody cares. And in the writing world, which is really mostly to the point, in the writing world of real writers and real editors and real publishers and real authors, she is an all-capital nobody. She's a nobody. But, however, the one exception is that Stephanie writes this ten pages anyway. That, my friends, is an example of what we call might. Power and possibility. Power and possibility. Now, might, if you want to know what else might mean, might means playing big with your power on your possibilities. Write that down. Because you're going to need to remember that over time as we go deeper and deeper into my favorite subject in the world, which is getting results and taking action and playing big. So if you ever wonder, like, oh, might, yeah, I know might means power and possibilities. But but what exactly, how do I exactly be mighty? That's going to come up a lot. I want you to look at what I had you just write down. Play big. Okay. When you play big, the thing is, the reason why I'm, I'm having you write that down is when you play big, you never, ever, ever know what's in store for you. So back to Stephanie. In a matter of three months, You know, she liked this 10-page story she had, so she kept going on the 10-page story, and she transformed her 10 pages into a complete novel. And the whole time that she's writing it, she's writing it for her enjoyment. She has no intention to publish it. Because do you think that she thinks her novel is any good? (laughs) Absolutely not. I don't know many people who, while they're creating something, are so ridiculously secure and confident that they're positive they're creating something great. Usually, they think that they might be creating something bad, worthless, terrible, but they're clinging to the process because they also have another might, and that might is they might, they just might, it could be in the realm of possibility, it's somewhere lodged in their brain that they might, they might be doing something good. But Stephanie was very insecure while she was writing it. But her sister's response to her book was enthusiastic. And her sister persuades her to send the manuscript to a literary agent. A literary agent that they found on the Internet. 
So they find uh, 15. She writes to 15 literary agents, and five of the inquiry letters go unanswered, and nine come back with rejection, not good enough, not a chance in hell, no way. So Stephanie, now she really has no validation for being a writer. Still nobody cares about Stephanie the writer, her, except her sister, a family member, a close family member. How often are we judging our own might based on other people's initial, initial opinion of what we think we might want to pull off in life? Okay, so back to the story. You, you're probably ahead of me. Stephanie had one last response to receive, and if you've, as you've likely guessed, it was a positive response. As a matter of fact, it was very positive. Eight publishers competed for the rights to publish her book in 2003. She signed a $750,000 three-book deal for a little book called Twilight about vampires. And Stephanie's books have already sold over 100 million copies globally. Her annual earnings exceed $50 million, and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about here. But what are you thinking right now? Check your thoughts right now, because I want to know. I want you to safety check if you had any thoughts whatsoever, like, yeah, 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 but that would not never happen to me, you know, numbers like that. That's exactly, exactly the kind of thinking that a stay-at-home mom was running through her head, too. Yeah, 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 but I'm not going to be the next Harry Potter woman. I've just got this little, this little dumb idea. The question, the central question in my time, in a process I'm going to teach you all in good time, the central most important question is when are we going to stop, when are you going to stop listening to the BS voice that's in your head that says, yeah, yeah, but those huge, crazy, huge things aren't going to happen to me. Remember, Stephanie Myers almost didn't even write the first ten pages. And Stephanie Myers almost didn't send her book out to literary agents. And if she hadn't, we can be pretty sure that she'd still only be known, and, not, and it's a wonderful thing, but still only be known as a stay-at-home mom and not having lived that tremendous dream of hers. But... With that said, let me be very clear, something that we're all well aware of. Most people go to their grave with their might, their big dreams. They're playing big, their music still inside of them. And the question is why. The question for today is why. And I'm going to wrap on this. I'm going to end on this question, and I'm going to, and I, and I'm going to answer it. But then I want you to think about the two things, and we'll come back to it, okay? I want you to think about how how Stephanie changed the course of her destiny versus why most people don't. Okay. We might leave you with a little dissonance today, but something to think about. All right. Why do most people go to their grave still with their music still in them? Why do most people feel really good and fired up and inspired and very much in touch with a dream that is very real to themselves on, say, Saturday for some reason, but then by Wednesday their head is slumped on their desk? There are so many different reasons. Think about him. One is one of the most successful people I've ever met and, and become friends with a person in my life once said to me, um, Patrick, it's the tyranny of urgency. The tyranny of urgency steals most people's dreams away. People just giving their lives to what's urgent rather than to what matters. Second reason why most people don't make it, the crush of overwhelm. More and more all the time these days. More and more entrepreneurs I speak to all the time. I'm overwhelmed. I'm just completely overwhelmed, Patrick. Oh, if you saw my to-do list. Third reason I'll offer up today is the anchor of insecurity and doubt and fear. Nobody is immune to insecurity, doubt, and fear. But for some of us, it's, it's a bigger, heavier anchor. There's no system to deal with it. The other thing that steals people's dreams is the slow death of time fillers. Just things that let an entrepreneur feel busy you can keep crossing things off a list, but they're just filling time. And deep down inside, that person knows that none of those activities have the potential to crack open and bring about the massive possibilities. They're just killing time. 
That's why there's the phrase. Another thing that steals people's dreams away, leaves their music still in them when they go to their grave, is heartbreaking failure. It's demoralizing. Boy, oh boy, have you had your heart broken with failure before? If you haven't, you're not playing big enough. <laughs> because that's a regular occurrence in my house. And the last reason, write it down, the catastrophe of playing it safe. There it is, my friends, the reason why so many people who are literally less steps away than they'd ever dream of big things happening in their life, closer than they ever realize, and yet never getting that brass ring, never getting their glorious results, because urgency, overwhelm, insecurity, fear, killing time, heartbreaking failures, and the catastrophe of playing it safe. And now I'll circle us back around to Stephanie Myers just to trace that one more time. See, urgency could have taken her away from doing those ten pages. Overwhelm as a mom of three could have taken her away from doing those ten pages, from acting on that idea. Insecurity, doubt, and fear almost took her away from acting on those ten pages. Time fillers. Heart, heartbreaking failure in Stephanie's life, somewhere that we're not aware of yet. Stephanie could have just tried to play it safe and just said, hey, you know, I don't want to mail my letter to 15 literary agents. I'm a nobody in that world. I'm just, my sister likes it. That's more than enough, and I like it too. It's just a hobby. That's how close she was, and that's how close you and I can so often be to the difference between a glorious result in our life and one that never comes about and we didn't know was just waiting for us on a shelf. Now, just to be really clear, I'm, I'm very, I like to be very analytical and detailed in dissecting what it takes for any one of us to be extraordinarily successful. I like to pay attention to the gap. The gap in most people, in most speakers' stories the gap that they conveniently lead out, because if you were to look in that gap, you'd see, oh, wow, they had to take a lot of action, didn't they? I like to pay attention to that gap. I like to pay attention to the gap in success stories that most people live, leave out where the person was really insecure, but they did it anyway. Because those two things are so true about success. And if you get clear that on those two gaps being so true about successful entrepreneurs, that successful entrepreneurs are moving forward, with a lot of action. And don't let anybody, anybody, anybody ever, ever, ever tell you they're not or they're lying to you. I didn't say a lot of work. Did you notice that? Because when you're working on the right thing, it is not a lot of work, my friends. It's just a lot of action. But it's a lot of action you really enjoy. It's a lot of action that makes your days flow. But perhaps the most surprising thing in addition to the action they're taking, is the fact that they're often taking it with insecurity. But they're winning. Somehow they're winning the game. against. They're beating urgency and overwhelm and insecurity. They're beating that game. And as a result, they're taking action. And they're meeting with tremendous results. That's what I wanted you to have you think about today. And if you'll meet me back on the phone tomorrow morning for more Might Time, we'll go further into this conversation because I'm headed towards showing you a tool that has literally changed thousands of lives in the area of getting great results. And it is perhaps the most profound entrepreneurial process I've ever been exposed to. It's, it's a daily, it's a little daily habit system, if you will, that can change everything. And those are big words, but I mean it. So if you'll meet me back here tomorrow, we'll go a little bit further. But take for today as your inspiration that, that, uh, that the best thing you, you could do when you get off the phone here is write down one glorious, bold action to take that is in service of your biggest idea. 
get a little out of your comfort zone. Because play, a, play big on one idea today, next, as soon as you get off the phone. And think of it as your Stephanie Myers, your Stephanie Myers move today, all right? And we'll see you back here at the next Might Time. Have a great day, my friends. This call is back over. This call is a wrap. This call is a wrap.